Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thanks for joining me I'm Katie and it's a scroll box kind of day Wow I've had two mystery art supply boxes in one week that's great I feel like things are getting back to normal again so let's have a look what's inside This month's featured artist is Alice Coles and she has a YouTube channel called Hello Alice so be sure to check out that and all of her social media and it was a really nice picture as well. Anyway let's crack on with the filling of this box. So it always interests me when you get one of these boxes within the boxes because that's like an extra mystery right and this month it was the Derwent Ink Tents blocks which I just so happened to purchase the week before I'd only picked a few colours up so I'm not feeling too bad but what are the chances of that right? I think at some point though I will do a bit more of an in-depth ink tents video boy that was hard to say we've also got a paintbrush a white gel pen and a pencil as well as a sticker and some fabulous paper to work on and I am absolutely loving scroll box at the moment for the additional paper they are providing because beforehand by the time you'd done the swatches and you'd done your final piece there was nothing left to work on so it's actually really nice to be able to do that we've also had the scroll zine and as well as that, we had a drumstick lolly chew, which was well nice. Drumsticks were like one of my favourites growing up. So it was quite a nice, nostalgic, little chewy sweet we had. And of course, let's not forget the sticker that we got in this month's box, which matches the colour scheme and medium used by the artist. So let's get into what's inside the box a little bit more. The pencil we have is a Caran d'Ache Prismalo pencil, I hope I'm saying that right, and it is a water soluble pencil and it's very 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 pigmented. We of course have the Derwent Ink Tents blocks and I don't have any colour names but they do have colour numbers which I am writing down on screen, I'm not going to go through them because that would be dull and like I say I'd bought some but I hadn't actually got round to using any of the blocks so this is my first time really having a play about with them and they, they're, ex they're exactly what I expected from the Ink Tents range, there's really vibrant colour there, I thought I'd try and blend them a little bit with my finger to see if that could be possible and it is to a certain extent but these are either to be used dry or to be used with the, pa the paintbrush and water. Now it's easy to compare these to the Ink Tents pans as well because they are more like a watercolour set but I did find that these just left a slight a little bit more of a residue than the pencils and the pan set does but again I guess that's to bind the bar together but it wasn't anything that would be a problem and I think if I crushed them up and put them into a palette and added water that way that wouldn't perhaps be so much of a problem. Upon adding some water to the Caran d'Ache pencil, wow I mean that again that seemed a little bit like the ink tents pencil range so that might be something I might look into into a future date but wow that was fantastic just to mention as well I've completely forgot the brush we have is a sea white synthetic brush and that is in a size 6 and really nice brush to paint with and finally the jelly roll well we know how they all work I use them quite frequently but it kind of showed up pretty well over the ink tents so this month's scroller challenge was spirit animal and to be honest I've never really thought about what my spirit animal would be it's it's one of them things where I kind of like all animals I don't feel like massively drawn to a particular kind so I thought long and hard about it and I went for a magpie why did I go for a magpie well they like all things shiny and I suppose to a certain extent I like all things shiny mainly art materials but I'm gonna put that in the bracket of nice shiny things just for the sake of this video and for the sake of the magpie I also quite like the personality of a magpie I mean they don't care they don't care they, they'll go in they'll swoop at you they'll strut around 
We usually have one that comes and visits our garden daily and it raids the bird table and then we don't see it until the same time again the following day. Although we do hear it throughout the day. They make a kind of rattling noise, don't they, when they call? And we usually know when the magpie's about. But I don't mind a magpie. I know they're a bit of an omen. Not for me. They're okay. I always say hello to them. Does anyone else do that? So anyway, what am I doing on screen? So I started off using the black pencil that came and I just swiftly outlined everything and I am going around the edges in a black outline because I want this magpie to be colourful. So I'm putting all the dark colours on the outside for this so that'll be the black obviously and I'm going to go in there with some colour. but. I can't believe how pigmented this pencil is. I, I really was surprised. Like I said, I've not used this particular kind of pencil before. I can't believe I'm getting really excited about a pencil, but yeah, it was fantastic. You could lift the pigment off with a brush and you could also go back on the page again. And I really like how you can choose how diluted it is as well. That makes sense. So some areas I've obviously done darker than others and it was it was nice however I did notice it doesn't erase very well I did try I used a kneaded eraser as well as a regular one and that wasn't lifting at all but you know that's okay for the ink tent side of things I thought let's go down with a bit of pigment first so I put some down not too heavily though I didn't push down as much as I did for the swatches and I can't using a flat edge to draw something is not something I'm used to so it was quite interesting to think of another way of applying these pigments before adding the colours and it's quite nice because you can get some nice straight lines with it and also you can cover broader areas which I thought was pretty cool. So I decided to layer the colours up before adding the water on this particular area and I went for the blue and the purple and that wine red colour as well because they were the darkest three out of the set. And although I didn't apply a huge amount of pressure for the colour blocks, I was really gobsmacked by how much colour came off them. I mean you can see for yourself there's, there's not a huge amount of scribbling that's gone down beforehand but the amount of colour that came to life was great. Again, it still just had a little bit of a residue to it, but it wasn't anything It wasn't anything that sort of ruined the picture once it had dried. It was just noticeable more when I was adding the water. And then when it came to adding another layer, because I don't know if you know with ink tents, but as soon as you put that layer down, added the water, let it dry. It doesn't shift after that, it's brilliant. So it didn't concern me too much when I went over it again later and I do, you, you'll see later on. I wanted to avoid too much ghosting because there is just a tiny little bit there but that is just the nature of the medium and that can be used to enhance it rather than it seems a bad thing. So to avoid any further ghosting I applied the paintbrush directly to the ink blocks just to add a bit more of a flash of colour and just add a little bit more control to where I was applying it. Now one thing I haven't spoken about on here is the paper. It is 350 GSM and it's made by Sea White or Sea Bright? Sea White? It's Sea White. Yeah, and I've used their paper before. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but my other studio is above an art shop and they do stock quite a lot of the Sea White papers there. And I quite like Sea White. So after adding that initial colour lay down, I decided to go back around the magpie with that pencil and just add a little bit more definition so those edges weren't quite as soft and that was brilliant for that. Of course as well adding the water to it just brought it to life. I'm, can you tell I'm quite enamoured by this pencil? That's weird right? Now, I forgot to mention as well that I added a little ring to our magpie's beak because that's what we normally associate magpies with. I should have mentioned that at the start but it just seemed like a nice feature and also something else where I could perhaps just add all of the colours that were included. So for what would be the white areas on the magpie I decided to use the green and yellow 
Now I used these as I would a watercolour and just added the brush to it and then added the paint to the paper and smushed it around with some water because I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle, I didn't want it to quite stand out as much. I also thought now was a good time to paint the beacon on the magpie, otherwise I'd forget, so I went in there with the purple and whilst the purple was still wet, drizzled the blue paint onto it. And whilst I was there, I used that skin tone colour to add to the ring, but decided the yellow looked better, so I guess I didn't use the skin tone colour as much as I should have done. To add some finishing details, I went around with that fabulous pencil, adding a few tonal areas as well as details for like the feathers and around the beak and just making things look a little bit sharper. And as you'll see with this second layer of wash and ink I guess, the colours underneath don't lift, they just don't budge. Once, once it's been activated with water and dried, that's it, it, it just does not budge off the paper. I think some ways that is brilliant and I, I like this feature with the ink tents anyway. If you make a mistake though I guess it's not so forgiving but I actually think ink tents are really good for doing an underpainting of a watercolour so you don't run that risk of the colour lifting later on and I think they're really useful for that. To add some highlights to the bird, I used the jelly roll pen and I think maybe because it's quite hot over here in the UK at the moment, it was misbehaving a little bit and I really had to work it. So yeah, or I'd got a dud, but to be honest I've got that many white gel pens, I I'm not really, I'm not going to cry over it, it's okay. But yeah, I did have to work it quite hard. But I quite like how it's just made it pop a little bit more from the background. And I also added his legs in because I hadn't and they were just these big voids on the paper. So I decided to paint them blue and use the purple to add some shadows. It's just time to finish off with that black pencil and add a few more details with that jelly roll and we're pretty much done. In conclusion, this month's scroll box has been fantastic. It's been really good. I've been really impressed by the amount of things we've got in there and the items we've got too. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried any of these for yourself or if you use them or if you've been curious about them and this video's helped. And also, let me know if you want me to do a bit more of an in-depth ink tent video. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching and I do hope you found this video useful and interesting and fun to watch. If you have, don't forget to give me a good old thumbs up and if you're new here and made it this far, why not subscribe? Anyway, I shall see you on the next video. Bye!